You're live. G'day everyone and uh, welcome to the second week of the Hurt Box podcast. Paul Emmy, I'm your host and my co-host Simon Camero. Um, and look, we're really excited to be back again this week. It was a huge success the first week and thanks heaps to, uh, to Liv Golan. It went down really well and we got some awesome feedback. So we really appreciate that. I've had a lot of feedback from Simon, so I'll have to keep this short. Um, <laughs> But if we could get everyone to like and subscribe and share just to spread the love, we'd really appreciate that. Um, but we really do appreciate the feedback. So yeah, it's been huge. If you've got any feedback about who you'd like to see interviewed, let us know. But uh, without further ado, we'll hand over to this week's guest. And I can tell you from the quick little chat that we've already had and the many chats that we've had over the years, this is going to be an absolute clanger. This guy's a bloody legend a good friend of mine, a good friend of ours, and uh, really look forward to, to catching up with the one and only Nathan Struggler Stewart. So welcome, Nato. Welcome, thanks, mate. How are you, boys? Welcome. Thanks for joining us, mate. No, thanks for having me on. And uh, look, really appreciate you coming on. This guy, for, for people who don't know Nathan, and I'm sure there's not many people who don't, a bit of a legend of the local triathlon scene for a long time. We'll hopefully find out how long. And... Uh, Probably one of the most successful triathletes that the Newcastle area has produced. So we'll go and explore that. And really want to explore that the main thing about Nato is how much he can hurt himself. So we really want to go there, mate. But I guess over to you, buddy. And let's start at the beginning. No, 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 Paul. You should keep going, mate. It's been great uh, hearing yeah. you talk. Yeah. <laughs> mate. Thanks, mate. I just wanted to hear from how you got into it, mate, where it started and, and where did it go to? Yeah. Okay, so I first got into triathlon. I, I moved in with my grandparents when I was about 13 or 12 years old. And my grandfather was a, uh, you know, heavily into surf lifesaving and stuff like that. And coupled with that, a guy called Rob Walker lived about three doors around the corner. And he was a 10 times, well, still is a 10 time Ironman finish at Foster and blah, blah, blah. So I was just sort of, you know, apart from my go- uh, grandfather taking to the pool, every second morning and doing that type of thing in surf. Then I'd Robbie walk around, Rob and Sue Walker who become sort of, you know, second set parents to me growing up. And and then I started trying with Rob and then there was all those guys like, you know, uh, Mark Shepard, the John Clifford, uh, you know, who's gone now, God love him. And just all, uh, Dave Naylor, Hinesy, you know, just all them sort of older guys who I just hung out with and went training with every day. So I was like a buddy. Mate, I was the only kid tries, but it was so long ago now. It was probably like, I'm, I would have been 1991, 92. I would have been 14 at that age. I was like the only triathlete I was a kid in Newcastle. So were you looking uh, for something to do or something to set you apart or a bit of freedom? Or what was the, what was the thing? Uh, that got I don't know. It was just around me. And I idolised Rob and, you know, my grandfather. And then he had like, you know, he coached people like, you know, as we all know, Boyd and... Uh, Peter Scott and blokes in the circle. It was just around. It's, I think just monkey see, monkey do. It was around me. And that's what I wanted to do because everyone around me was sort of doing it, you know. So I was, uh, yeah, lucky, really. Mate, what about your first race? Can you remember it? Yeah, buddy. I, um, first triathlon was at Lake Macquarie the day before the big lake. Because we Lake Macquarie used to have a big triathlon and blokes like Greg Welsh and People like that one, the main one. But yeah, we raced the day before and I was a horrible swimmer. And it's on, I've got it on tape somewhere. But yeah, I was a little bit back. You must have bloody worked at it because he swims like a fish now. Yeah. Um, so when did you start to realize that you, you had some ability at it? But well, when I say I did that race and didn't go good the next year, I won it. Like I, I come out of that like any rate, and then well, a year later, you know what I mean? Well, I don't mean the big one. I mean the kids won the day before. Oh, We're right. Back when I'm like fourteen, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, I my grandfather was just heavily had me in competition, whether it be running races or whatever. So if I would get boot, which I would. I'd know the kid that beat me, and I'd just chase him to every fun run and everything. You know, and wow, I might go wow, from wow. four minutes behind last week to three thirty this week, and you know, yeah, yeah. And then uh, can you can you give us a bit of an insight as to why your grandparents ended up looking after you? If that's all right, mate, or is? Oh, yeah. Um, my my parents were young. I had a young mother. Blah blah blah. Yeah, it's just 
and I'm not whinging. I had a good life. My yeah. wife and parents are cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah, but you yeah, just when I was young and, uh, yeah, I ended up just going over to my grandparents and living there, which which was, you know, like I said, I'm... So I'm was your granddad life. your your first coach? Was he, like, the first one that was driving you into... Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was. I'll and put up right. that photo of him now, mate, just to, um, just to share. Yep. Yeah, that's him there. That's him there. So, so that's Oldie. the year he died. About twelve years ago, he was sixty-eight. He, that's the day he's winning the Australian Scoot title in his age group. There, he, he died the Australian Scoot champion in his age group. God, he looks him. like a fit unit. Legend. <laughs> yeah, <sorta. laughs> Absolute yeah. legend. A legend yeah, of Newcastle for God sure. Simon, so, I mean, I'm going to have to keep you on track, mate. You, you're dragging the chain a bit. So. Um, Nate, when did, when did you sort of start to get pretty serious about it, mate? How old were you? Uh, well, yeah, then. I, I was serious straight away when I was young and wanted to be good. That's the funny thing. By the time I'd finally just got good, that's when I became a bit of a rat bag when I got late tunes and that. And I didn't mind racing still, but I wasn't training too much. I was sort of opposite of a lot of the young blokes these days. Everyone seems to do a lot of training and never jumps into any events where I was the other way around, and I think that's what – Got me through, but I probably underachieved and raced pretty hard till I was about 20, till the 2000 Ironman at Foster. I mean, first Ironman, didn't have a good one, just cramped and blah, blah, blah. And then um, at a fair few years off there and like had about five years straight off. And, was that and Foster, the, Foster Ironman? Yeah, it was. I had a really good year loading in and I was flying really, but. I, I've never been good at real good at real long stuff, but I just cramped. I was in the loop pack. It was the year yeah, that I only, only ended up coming eighth one year at Port Macquarie. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah a long time later. Yeah. And that, and that's where I was going. And that was only from hard work. And that, um, yeah, I, I went better the shorter, shorter it went. But that, um, so I had five years off then and come back. And that's when I did better at the longer stuff and was yeah. a bit more. What's the word? Um, head down, bum up, and and you know, had a few good years in my late twenties, I think, and early thirties, and then yeah. Mate, so what probably, was your best? What was your best result over those uh, over that time? Maybe fourth Australian long course one day, or second the other way. Was that a half distance? Yeah, yeah, it was. I was second the whole way, and got I think Verkel and some at the end. I got. Can't remember it's so long ago now. Like, yeah, oh, like, and I did it like I did about three or four of them races. I think I had a four, six, and an eighth, but right, they're all right. sort of similar races. You know what I mean? And I, um, yeah, that that was probably best. I, it's funny. A lot of my best results weren't actual wins. You know, everyone talks about mm. winning and losing all the time, but you got to boot someone for it to be a good win. You know, so mm. so my, like, you might ask what was my best results? Not actually winning something. Generally, it was. And mate, before you went to Long Course, though, there was a stint there of going to the AIS, going and training with the Cole Stewart squad on the Gold Coast, which was like the, the premier squad. Can you tell us about those experiences? Well, when I was younger, I was like uh, leading in the 2000s. And you've got to remember, Australia was out of control with athletes. But I, I, I was picked in all the squads and we'd go and be in the like, train down at, um, at Canberra or, or at Narrabone. And we, I, mate, I trained from everyone because – from Simon Whitfield, because he was a sort of an Aussie. His dad was an Aussie dude. Yeah, wow. Everyone. I, I mm. trained and raced with most people you'd know. But when I went up the Gold Coast, actually, I wasn't with Cole. I was with – I trained with Guy Andrews. Oh, right. Right. Guy, We had a good little squad. Guy Andrews, myself, Simon Knowles, uh, Stephen King, a good surf on man. Um, Luke Watson, another one. And, yeah, we, we had a pretty good squad up there. But, um, yeah, I, I was – all good times. A long time ago now, too. That was like when I was 17 or 18, and this, I'm, I'm 43. Have you got a favourite memory from that period, that sort of AIS, sort of training hard, racing hard? You got a good memory from that, Mark, that, that sort of time? I would have. I just can't think. No, I'm not stressed. <laughs> no, I, you know what I mean? I would have. I just, there's so many. Um, oh, yeah, I think you've raced and, so and mo and most And most of the memories are off the pitch, mate. But with, no, with, was, there, was there a moment at that period, say, in the AIS, where you were, like, with the league guys in a training exercise or thinking, well, I'm running really strong, I can handle myself with these guys, they're nothing special, or were you always just, you know, really respectful of them as athletes and what was happening, or...? Oh, 
mate. I don't know. I was sort of always um, so long ago now, all that stuff. I can't really remember it too much. Like, I, I do remember it now, but I, as far as the train, no, I, don't, I never really cared. That was the drama. I was getting to the stage and I didn't give a shit that much. Like, I was, mm. and I'd ra- and I'd race hard and everything, but I was just uh, a bit blase and I don't know. Why don't, why don't you think you cared? You just, you just, you didn't have the. What you didn't want to do more or less, or what was the what was it? The I don't know, can't put it into words. I was thinking about the, before, the, I the, the, this sort of stuff, and I was thinking about because I knew I was coming on, and I was like, I fucked it up. You no, know, not at all. So, no, 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 I did, I did, like it's, I, I know I did. But like, one of the things that you've always been really good at, mate, is um, you said off the pitch, and any success that you've ever had, it's never gone to your head. and You've always been great to catch up with and, and have a couple of beers with. You've always kept it real. And I, I think that's a really admirable trait that, that you have, you know, always very humble. Do you, mm. How did you ever find the balance between, you know, getting loose and being disciplined? Um, well, it's yeah, well, there's a line. There, there's the part where you want to succeed and then there's the part. You, the, you've got to be two different people on and off the pitch, I think, mm-hmm. obviously. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there's the competition uh, side of things and racing hard and whatever or else. And then there's, you know, having a good time after it all. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah or, or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think anyone really gives a shit when you look down the street whether you won the triathlon or not on the weekend because no one even really knows there was a triathlon on, you know what I mean? Mm. So it's pretty yep. easy to keep a level head when you're in this game because yep. no one really gives a shit anyway. Mate, moving, moving towards the, the, the long course stuff, you know, that's probably what most triathletes are super interested in. I mean, I think you're probably a lot more successful at short course stuff, if, if we're honest. Um, yeah, that, that, that was only because all the short stuff stuff had stopped, so I had to go to long course. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, the 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 feeling of of making that transition and and that you know that just that constant monotony of long miles and then racing and how hard it is and how long it is. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, like in the, like I said before, be about late twenties when I sort of had me real good stint after I had years off and I got hungry again and that, yeah, that, that was um, like, uh, it was a grind, you know, if I was racing an Ironman, I'd, each week, I'd, I'd used to, I remember I used to ride 300k every weekend, I'd go, I'd roll, I'd roll over, bike race hard and, and ra- ride home, they'd give me about 80 or, no, sorry, about 100 and then on, on the Sunday, then I'd do like a 180 to 200k ride with an hour run. So I'd get 300k in the weekend, and then I was pretty tired the rest of the week, and I worked. So I just sort of floated along. But so though leading the 12 weeks into a big race could do that. So that was pretty, you know, a grind and monotonous. And then, yeah, all well, the racing, yeah, that, that was bloody, you know. Oh, mate, I've got fond, fond memories of seeing that day that you came out to Portman Quarry. I remember you running, and I don't think you knew where you were. But yeah. I've never seen someone hurt themselves as much as you can. So it's certainly Is that because a- of cramp? Was you were you cramping up at the end there or nah that 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 was I don't know if you I think I know what you're talking about. That was the next year I was I, I should have had a real proper good race so in two thousand nine, but my whole body locked up with about six K to go. Um that was the year I was third off the bike and should have went pretty quick and blew it, but the year at 2008, I did get eighth in about 903, but that was just, I, um, we just, a lot, a few of us just got a long way ahead on the pushy, and then I, I just sort of struggled to the end. It was, I remember getting off the bike, and I did not have one cent of energy for 42k, but well, I was in seventh and got So you've just done a 180k uh, time trial at yep. 40k, and you had, you, had another, you had another 40k on, the, on a, a marathon. Oh, to and run. I was rap shit, but. Yeah, I just, like I said, I, I never went that, I don't think that great in long stuff just because it just didn't suit me. I was better over an hour and a half or whatever. So mm. I get in those long races. And so how did you finish well, that last six Ks then if you're full body cramp? Oh, it, the year before, the, the next year, age groupers on the other lap pulled my legs apart. And then I ended up <laughs> walking to the finish in like nine hours, nine or something. I got about twentieth or something. That was in 09. I stood off the pushy. I, I blew they had, that people way. had to literally straighten your legs. I did. Yeah, it was like being caught <laughs> in the camera. And the worst part is all on camera. Like it's. <laughs> I, I, I do. I do have a memory of two thousand and eight because I think I might have 
struggled around that year as well. But my memories from the pub the next day, and it started pretty early, and it was it was a long day, and yeah. that's where that story ends. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I half remember show. that day too. Yeah, I, tell you, I remember having to go to the pre- had the, you know when you got to go to the Prezzo and all that in shape and probably made it onto the top ten, so I had to be in good shape and absolutely yeah. hilarious. It was a long day, mate. I wanted to I wanted to delve into what's been a really unique relationship that you've had with the Battler, with good old yep. Boyd. Everyone knows, and hopefully we can get him on the show too. Yep. Um, mate, you guys have been the greatest rivals, but also the greatest friends for a long time. Yes. And, uh, I think that's pretty unique. So, did you want to just touch on that a little bit? Mate, yeah. Um, Butler's one of my bestest friends in the world. He's a just a champion, you know. And, uh, yeah, we had some good race at times. Um, you know, like, he, he was bloody top-notch, you know. He was pretty underrated. Like, a lot, a lot of people wouldn't know, especially when he'd go over and have a bike race and fall off the back and blah, blah, because he wasn't a size. But when he was fitting on, he mate, he could ride a bike too. Yeah. Like he was a solid swim bike runner. Um, you know, I think he had a bit of six at in Malaysia, and you know, like he, he had some big results. I had a, had a year in the Formula One. That's you know right. I mean? when it was, yeah, yeah, like mate, he, he was solid. But yeah, we're, we're still best of friends now. Talk, you know, maybe not every day. We're talking today actually because, oh, um, oh god, I've just had the worst mental <clears> block. <throat> what? So the the drummer from the. Rolling Stones, because we went and saw him, and he, oh, he Charlie Watts. Watts. Oh, Charlie Watts. Charlie Watts. Yeah, really yeah. Sad. Yeah. yeah, so we'll chat in the Sarvo, because we, Boyd, myself, and another mate, Pete, we went and saw him them, so we, we got to see him anyway, but yeah, it was a... No, I t- take my hat off, mate, because, you know, to, to to have sort of competed against each other for so long, but to have remained mates, it's, it's yeah, it's something yeah. to be really proud of, so both both bloody legends, so... Yeah, um, well, I have probably to get him on the show, mate. Probably the, the next one I'd ask, mate, is the biggest learning that you'd share with young young guys getting into the sport. Race. Get the race and experience up. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, that, that, that's the only thing I can tell you. Race as much. And don't worry about losing. You're going to lose all the time. Yeah. People so, don't realise that, do they? Oh. But you'll lose way, way more than you'll mate, win. you lose, yeah. I've lost more races than anyone, mate. You lose yeah. way more than you win. If you if if you forget about if you if you don't care about losing, right, well, you'll become dangerous. Did you ever? Did you ever? Did it's you ever line. think? Awesome. Yeah, that is a great line. Sorry, I cut you off there, mate. You, why do you think that you do become dangerous if you're not afraid of losing? Because you will just make those moves in a race. Well, yeah, there's just got nothing to lose. You rock up. So some of the, but some of the times I've had my best races when I shouldn't have raced. I was sick. I hadn't been training or. Or whatever, and I just go anyway, and then you have this blinder, and you're like, "Where the hell did that come from?" And then mm. you have a think about it later, and you go, "Well, it did line up. You you're you fit three weeks ago, and you're rested now." And those people that just only jump on the start line when they're 110 percent fit because they're worried about God knows who they're worried about who they who's thinking you, about them or whatever. Yeah. Mate, so, you, mate, you, you'll have your the best races you'll have over the years on days you did not expect to. Yeah. Did you see no. that decathlon, the image of the decathlon Olympics, the bronze medalist Australian, and no, he had his I, mate? No, I didn't. I saw a bit in the news, I, I, on me news on me phone, but, yeah, that looked choice, but I didn't see it. So he no. just screamed in his ear for the entirety of the last year. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I didn't see that. So, Nate, the, the latest... Um, what do you want to call it? Adventure, I suppose. Pardon the pun. Has been into adventure racing a little bit. Yep. Um, how long have you been doing that for? And and what's the appeal there, mate? I've always done it, but I only do it like once or twice a year, and just didn't care about it. But when I, when I got a little bit older, the last few years, I ended up getting some decent gear and just you know had stuff like lost a mountain man and a few races down south and just. Practice me paddling a bit more because I was a paddler when I was young because of my grandfather, but I'd just do those races and didn't do any training. So I've just been doing some races down south down there and um, just something different, mate, when you've been doing triathlon so long, you know what I mean? It was just. Sounds yeah, pretty just, tough, though, some of the ones that you've done. Yeah, I, mate, de- the ones down in Victoria are brutal, absolutely brutal. The climb's just nothing like here. Yeah. A bit bigger yeah. than Sugarloaf, eh? Huh? <laughs> a bit bigger oh. than Sugarloaf. 
Oh, mate, they just go, porns just go for an hour. What like you'd be yeah. calling. And the thing is, when you say you're doing your foot, like you a race down there and you you don't know when the climb ends, that's what kills you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tempo. Anyway, you've, yeah. Got, you've got kids now, mate. How many kids have you got? I have five. Holy crap. Well done, yeah. brother. How yeah. do you fit it all in? How you going? Hey, Horace is there, say hello. Hey, Horace, how you going? How do you, you fit it, how do you fit it all in, mate? How do you fit in the kids and the training and the business? Good missus. Oh, well done. Good wife. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, good. no, she uh, yeah, well, see so my, my wife stay at home, mum, and I go to work, so <clears> and, uh, yeah, I don't think I think she's pretty glad to get me at the house. So and, and like, I, I go, I I um say I do two sessions a day. One's early in the morning anyway, so everyone's oh, right. so I'll get that first one at five or whatever and yeah, give your business a plug, mate. Bit of free advertising. What'd you say? Give your business, business a plug. <laughs> Um, I've got a small business called Blue Tongue Roofing where we change, we mainly change tiled roofs to Colourbond and I do Colourbond roofing. Nice, you know, I mate. Guarantee, I can guarantee he does a bloody good job. So. <laughs> nice one, mate. Thank you. And, Nate, probably the, the, the last question around racing is is something that you told me that we've had a chat about, about the, um, the Ultraman in Noosa, and that's on next year. Can yep. you just run us through the distances? Because this is, this is mind-blowing. All right, so I just got accepted into a race uh, in Noosa. It's the Australian leg. They have a world title at Hawaii too. So it's it's a three-day stage race. The first day is a 10K swim, 140K ride. Day two is a 280K ride. And day three is an 84K run. So have, you, have you sat down and worked out how long you think? What? Yeah, I have. Um, I haven't of late. It's about first day about six and a half hours, second day eight hours. It's it's about a twenty two to twenty three hour race, I think no. from memory. For me, I haven't thought about it for a little while just because I haven't been thinking about it racing so much. This has been nothing on. But mm. the funny thing was, I just got the acceptance on Friday night the email, so I have just started thinking about it again in the last couple of days, thinking you know I can't get too out of nick and. Yeah. Well, well yeah, super so. keen, super keen to sort of stay in contact on that one and see how that goes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, just coming back to the point that Paul was um, made earlier about your ability to hurt yourself. Where, where do you think that comes from? That ability to sort of knuckle down and just grind it out. Uh, or that? No, I, I always. It's funny. People say to me sometimes. I always think I'm pretty soft. <laughs> but, oh no, I do. Like, I, hey, there's not many people that would get their legs straightened out six k from the finish and then walk at home. Like, yeah, most I, just, yeah, uh, I suppose, yeah. I suppose. I suppose when you think about it, but still, though, don't get me wrong. I have bad thoughts, like everyone else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just. Well, yeah, there's a lot of people out there prepared to hurt themselves. I know that, but yeah, if, if you're not prepared to hurt, you're in the wrong game in this game. I think that's for mm. sure. Yeah, yeah. I was only talking to someone earlier tonight, though, and uh, you know, we talked about the fact that it doesn't matter the physical ability that you've got, and this is by no means an insult at all, mate. But I'm going to say that you're probably not the most naturally gifted athlete, mm. but you you have an amazing, amazing ability to hurt yourself. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. and you know, that's that's the difference, I think. It, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know how to hurt, yeah. So, um, I, want to take, I want to take you back before we do um, close this out, just to that comment you made before about that period at the AIS where you said, "Oh, you didn't," you know. I think you know. What are, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, not that you go back and change anything, but are there any learnings that you take with you today from that period, or oh, is mate, it just... they were just camps, and and I was probably at that stage of my life where I was about seven or and that, and I was just a bit wild, so I'd get away without me oldies or whatever and i'd just be freaking cooing to bloody chase the sheilas and bloody whatever else you know right 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 it was the last thing on my mind what what training session we're doing at that yeah, time yeah, yeah, off yeah. when i was seven i mean don't get me wrong you whack to race on the work and i'd race as hard as anyone yeah, uh, yeah, yeah like i said earlier sort of back to front which i think you'd, you're better off having yeah. than all the young blokes out now who just train all the time and you say oh you only races can they say oh yeah in march next year or something you're like there's been about what? six races in the last month, and you haven't done one. Look, where I'd be the other way, I'd be in every race going. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. It was a bit lazy training in my late teens, and 
which was from burnout, from trying and hard, from all my early tones and wanting to do well. But yeah, yeah epic. I don't know. Well, mate, you know, I, I take my hat off to you. It's been awesome to to know you for a long time. You too. Uh, 30, 30 years, twenty five years, or something like that. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's it, it must be good for you now to to look back, and I think you know you've had a lot of success and. Um, I really thank you for coming on and sort of yeah, sharing your experiences. It's it's awesome. Nice. That, thanks for having me, boys. No, um, thanks thanks for turning up, mate. Really good to see your face again after so long. Hopefully, yes. this gives a, a few other legends a bit of uh, bit of courage to come on the show too, mate. Yeah. We'll be able oh, to and, oh, and there's now. plenty around but from, from Newcastle in in there. Yep. You know what I mean? Like there's some there's some champ, you know, old affluence that everyone's forgot about from from folks like Mick Jurd, uh, you know, who I idolised. I watched him get eighth at Ironman Australia one day, run around the corner. And is Stewie is Stewie what uh, with the blonde hair, the long blonde curly yeah, hair? Yeah, like him. He was the next person I was going to say. Like he, both like, on the list. Didn't, mate. Both on I, used, the list. I used to train with Stewie Adams, Glenn Greedy, Heinzy, yeah, with yeah. Uh, Ian. You know, we used to do well, a, well, on the Tuesday Thursday morning rides or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah I grew yeah, up yeah. on them. I used, to, I used to pump them. I used to pump them. Yeah, 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 yeah. After the ride. Or... <laughs> Stewie would get around in the back on his mountain bike, mate. Oh, is he? Great, oh, bunch, he of guys, so great bunch of guys. Yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, awesome, yeah. mate. All right. Well, well, we might wrap it up there, I think. Are you no going to wrap it up? Thank you for having me. Did yeah, you know, no. Keep up yourself long yeah. enough. No, that's awesome, good. It's been, been able to keep Paul from not talking about himself. But thank you so much. Uh, no for joining us today, mate. Um, yeah, and just hit like, subscribe, and share on YouTube. Uh, and we'll keep bringing this fantastic content with awesome guests like Nathan. Great to see you after all these years, mate. Fantastic. You've got a family of five and take care during lockdown. Paul, I'll throw to you for any closing comments. For once, I have nothing to say. No, <laughs> absolute pleasure, Nato. You're Thank a legend, you. mate. Cheers, I really boys. appreciate awesome, you, too, mate. buddy. Look forward to catching up with you for a beer. You too. Good on you, mate. Later.